Hello everybody, Shadow Slayer X, playing more Arkham Horror the card game. So I waited as long as I thought I could, and that turned out to be like, what, two or three days? I said a week, but I'm gonna do the Midnight Masks. So this is the second scenario after the gathering. So if we hop over to our deck... So you can see at the bottom there the changes we made to the deck from last game. We had seven experience to spend and we spent all of it. So I included a Pathfinder, Charisma, and the 45 Thompson. So you can, and then I took out one Beat Cop and uh, the original 45 Thompson for, uh, for the level three version. Uh, actually, if I click on it. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. Alright, so Pathfinder, if we see it, costs three. I spent one experience point on it. It has the talent trait and it has a agility pip. As a free action during your turn, if you're not engaged with any enemies, you can exhaust Pathfinder to move to a connecting location. Now, this isn't something I'd always include in my decks. Um, I actually don't think I've ever run this before, but it's perfect for this scenario. I really hope I get it early. And then if we go down to Charisma... Charisma is actually not a good choice. Um, and I'll explain why. We don't have enough allies to really make this a good choice. Um, but I like the flavor of having uh, my cop buddy and Lita out at the same time. Uh, just to push us over the edge. I, I like doing that in games where it's like unnecessarily too strong in a certain stat. My ideal is to be unnecessarily strong in two stats, but I'll settle for uh, being able to kill stuff. And then the level 3 version of the 45 Thompson, there's two versions of this. There's the rogue version and the guardian version because after if we go over to us level one form so the level one form uh, is guardian rogue and it costs six still has five ammo plus two fight and deal plus one damage right but if we go over to the level three guardian version it still costs six still has five ammo but ammo spent from the 45 thompson is placed in your resource pool as resources so you spend six, you get five back. Um, and this only gets better, like, if I didn't spend the money on Charisma, I could have put in cards like Custom ammunition, ammunition, or Extra Ammo, things like that. Which could just make this even better. But, like I said, this is just the introductory to see if uh, people get interested and... Even if they don't, I still think I'm going to go ahead with my big plan, which I might explain at the end of the next episode. Um, but yeah. So, Midnight Masks. Oh, one thing I should point out. I did make a small mistake in the last game, but it did not affect anything. I think around turn 11, 12, 13, 14, around there, I wasn't sure if I used all three of my actions and I took an extra action to play a resource. <coughs> what I did the subsequent turn though is I think I spent a resource, played the grizzly totem, gained a resource, and then that resource stayed there for the rest of the game. So I didn't that was an easy fix. Like I don't ha don't feel like penalizing myself this game for that minor mistake. I think that was the only one I made. But yeah. Oh, what am I doing? Ooh, shuffle. Okay, so we're shuffling our encounter deck. We're shuffling the special set aside cultist deck. We'll get into that in a second. And we're shuffling our deck. As you can see, we now have 34 cards in our deck. And I'm pretty sure I didn't explain behind Roland here. So the deck size is 30, so you can only insert 30 player cards. Uh, the little caveat there. Uh, but what you get to choose from is Guardian cards level 0 to 5, Seeker cards level 0 to 2, 
and neutral cards level 0 to 5. And then cards that don't count towards the deck size is Roland's 38 special, Cover Up, the weakness that made me groan last time, and one random basic weakness. Now, you can get story assets, as we did last game, like Lita, who doesn't count towards the deck size. So that's why we have 34 cards. Now, there are cards such as Charisma down here, which lets me have an additional ally slot, don't go in the deck. So technically, it's in my deck list. Um, so I think... I need to go up just a tad more. So at the top there where it says Roland Banks, 30 cards, 35 total. That's because it's including Charisma, but that's not in the deck. Okay. Oh, one thing I noticed about my last video too, I do a lot of clicks and sows, and I'll try to work on that. Um, it's And the ums, yeah. It's very unconscious. I seem to do it a lot. But we're going to do our best. Always improving, right? All right. Part two, the Midnight Masks. Check your campaign log. If Lita was forced to find others to help her cause, read intro one. She was not. Otherwise, skip to intro two. In the wake of the disaster at your home, Lita Chandler, the red-haired woman from your parlor, lays out a tale that, even in the light of what you just witnessed, strains the limits of your belief. The creatures in your home, she claims, are called ghouls. Cruel beings who plague the crypts, caverns, and tunnels beneath the city of Arkham. These creatures feed on the corpses of humans, and they're served by a dark cult within Arkham, whose members have inexplicably come to worship the ancient master of the ghouls. This cult has been killing innocent people and feeding them to the ghouls, satiating a monster's hunger. A dark balance was maintained until now. Recently, Lita continues, one of their lairs, where the corpses were stored, was destroyed. Since then, the ghouls have been more active than usual. I've tracked their movement and tried my best to stop them from running amok throughout the city. But I think there is something worse going on. The cult has been planning something darker and more ominous than anything I have yet observed. Indications are that this plan shall come to fruition tonight, shortly after midnight. Beyond that, I cannot fathom what to expect. I really hope that was all in her voice. <laughs> Many of the cultists, Lita continues, will seem like everyday people despite their foul intentions. Whenever the cult meets, its members don masks shaped like skulls of various animals to protect their identities from one another. These, mark these masks are a mark, symbols of death and decay. We must unmask the cultists to expose and derail their plans. But we have but a few hours. The more cultists we find before midnight, the better. Right. <laughs> I apologize if that is a butchered British, no, uh, Scottish slash Irish accent. I am so sorry. All right, so tabletop already gathers all these things for us. Uh, yep, we have the cultist deck set aside already, and shuffled. Now we have to choose one of the two downtown locations and two of the south side locations at random, and put them into play. Remove the other version from the game, then set up all the rest. Based on the number of players in the game, well, there's only one, so no changes are made. Excellent. If there are exactly four players... Uh, check your camp line. If your house is burned to the ground, remove your house from the game. Each investigator begins at Rivertown. Okay. And I think we are good. Ghoul Priest is dead. Okay. So let's... Shuffle these. So this side looks exactly the same. So these are the removed ones. Excellent. Okay, so we have no idea which one's which. And let's move on to the agenda. <clears throat> agenda 1A, Predator or Prey. Lita seems convinced of a conspiracy within the city of Arkham. She believes that a secret cult serves the ghouls that live in the crypts beneath the city, and that several of the cult's prominent members are scattered throughout Arkham. As you begin searching for them, you can't shake the feeling that you, too, are being hunted. As an action, you can resign. 
so you can resign anywhere at any time. You don't want to risk taking too long, so you head to safety with the information you've gathered. And we got a nasty looking creature over there, I love it. And the Act deck. Act 1A, Uncovering the Conspiracy. You have one night to find the members of this cult and unveil their plan. The more members of the cult you can find and interrogate before midnight, the better. So as an action, the investigators spend two clues per investigator as a group. Draw the top of the cultist deck. Objective, find as many unique cultist enemies as you can and add them to the victory display. If there are six unique cultist enemies in the victory display, advance. Note, not all six of them are in the cultist deck. Okay. It's interesting to note, I think, I haven't done this, and not to brag, but I don't think I've actually had the ghoul priest be in the deck, but I think he counts as a unique cultist, doesn't he? So, technically, if you had the ghoul priest in there, you'd have more options to get six, which is an interesting thing. Um, and you would still get that to experience, but it's kind of delayed until this game. So it's it, it's it's interesting. Uh, so we'll read Rivertown and we'll... Are these not connected? Yes, they are. Yeah. Well, now I gotta check. Okay, you're only connected to two. You're connected to four, so one, two, three, four. Okay, maybe that was the outlier. You're connected to those two, connected to those three, don't worry about you, you're only connected to one. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, perfect. Okay. Just missing a little connector there. Alright, so we'll read Rivertown, and we'll go around like this. Rivertown, I love the art on these cards. Alright, Arkham Central. The banks of the Miskatonic River are lined with docks, warehouses, and small shops in a district aptly named Rivertown. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Southside. Middle class houses with gambrel roofs crowd together between the streets of Southside. The neighborhood is known for its cultural and social landmarks such as South Church, Moss Boarding House, and the Historical Society. St. Mary's Hospital. Arkham's only hospital, St. Mary's has a 24 hour receiving room and is busy at all hours of the night. Dr. Mortimer and Nurse Sharon have been particularly stressed lately, thanks in part to recent events. I wonder if those names come back. I I haven't played through every scenario yet, but probably not. It'd be really good attention to detail if they do. Miskatonic University is one of the most prestigious colleges in the Northeast. The university library is famous for its collection of occult books maintained by the esteemed Dr. Henry Armitage. Spoiler, that name does show up in another scenario. Or uh, campaign. Northside. Northside is a commercial district that contains many offices and factories as well as a train station. I believe from other games, I think Northside also has like the newspaper and things like that. Downtown Arkham. The downtown area of Arkham is filled with government buildings including City Hall, the First Bank of Arkham, Independence Square, and Arkham Asylum, uh, which can also be found in this area. It is the busiest district in the city. East Town. The East Town neighborhood situated on the northern banks of the Miskatonic River contains lower class housing, the Arkham Police Station, and popular eateries like Velma's Diner. And last but not least, the Graveyard, where Mr. Yorick works. The Graveyard lies at the foot of French Hill. Some of the headstones date back to the 17th century, when the early, earliest colonists came to Arkham. Considering what happened in your house, you're not completely keen on heading here or there. Okay, and there would be a house location, but I removed it. Um, I must have deleted it. I don't know where it actually went to show you guys. Okay, so we'll flip Rivertown. Okay, Rivertown starts with one clue. There's something unsettling about the water of the Miskatonic River tonight. It ripples and bubbles as though something is moving beneath the surface. Okay. I don't know if I mentioned there's a threshold of six here. All right. We'll shuffle our deck again, and draw a five. Okay, we have a weapon. I don't think I'm going to need the healing. I'd rather have... Ah, do I keep inquiring mind? 
It's not bad at getting clues. But I think I'm going to fish for... Oh, do I hold bandolier? Ah, oh, what a risk. I'll hold bandolier. Okay, not what I wanted at all, but... Not terrible. What the hell? There we go. Okay. Alright, as a first turn, I think it's kind of easy what to do here, so I'll spend all my resources to play the bandolier and the enchanted blade. Now because I don't know everything about tabletop, it won't automatically do it if I've already done it in the same session. There might be a way to fix that, I'm not sure. And then for my last action, I'm going to just investigate at a 3 to a 1, and I get the Elder Sign. So. We grab the clue, and that's it. I sh oh, gotta get in the habit of flipping these. Alright. Enemy phase, we have no enemies. Upkeep phase, gain a resource, draw a card. And we get Inquiring Mind back. Okay, maybe it's meant to be. Alright. We get a Doom. Let's see what our encounter is. And we get an Acolyte. Spawn in an empty location. So I'm planning on probably going down and around. It's always safe to start in one of these areas. The one of these two. Um, well, I mean, it's safe going anywhere, but uh, we're going to go here. So. An Acolyte. I don't think we've seen anything but ghouls before. So this is three fight, one health, thank god, uh, two agility. Spawn at any empty location. Force, after it enters play, place one Doom on it. So, these guys are dangerous because Acolyte's Doom counts towards the threshold. Um, you can remove it by killing the Acolyte, which is what we're going to do. Alright, that's it. That's the whole Mythos phase. So, investigation. Flip, flip, flip. Okay. So, we're going to probably go down. There's nothing we can do like equip for to like equip or anything. So what I think is safe, what I think is safe, is gonna we're gonna draw a card. So first action, draw one. Beat cop. Good. Something to work look forward to. Then we're gonna move down. Flipping south side. So we got Ma's boarding house. Oh, we can search your deck for an okay, sorry. I'm gonna have myself. South side, Ma's boarding house. Two shroud one clue. As an action, search your deck for an ally asset and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. Limit once per game. Ma is famous for its cheap rooms and mystery meet Mondays. A motley variety of characters can be found coming and going at all times of day. So the reason I was getting excited is we can use that ability to find Lita, add her to our hand. We won't have the money for Beat Cop, but Lita I believe is free. So that's awesome. All we gotta do is dispatch this guy. Um, he is a 3 fight, and we're at 4 fight. So if we just use the blade and not use a charge, we will be at a 5 to a 3, which I feel is safe. So I think that's going to be our last action here. Well, it is going to be our last action. So we are a 5 to a 3. Minus 1. Excellent. Doom. Gonna make another pile. That was fun last time, making a pile. The Acolyte is discarded. And because we killed a guy, we get a clue. Which is great. Things are looking good. Go back down to our regular. Enemy phase, no, enemy, no more enemies. And the upkeep phase, gain a resource, draw a card. Ah, perfect. Something worth fighting for. Something uh, worth saving up for when we need to spend some money. Alright. Two Doom. Because we got rid of the other one. Haunting Night Gaunt. Three fight. Four health. One evade. It is a hunter, so if we did get away from it, it would just keep following us. While attempting to evade the Haunting Night Gaunt, Double the negative modifier of each revealed chaos token. 
They had no faces at all to smile with, but only a suggestive blankness where a face ought to be. And it deals one and one. Oh, I should have mentioned what the other one does. He only does one health. It was only a small sacrifice. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, we don't get to pull out Lita yet, which is a shame. Hmm. Two thoughts. First thought. Only use one charge and attack twice? Or I can commit a vicious blow to a regular attack and then use one charge. I think that's a good idea. So let's do the regular attack first. We'll commit vicious blow, so that gives us one extra fight. Is the art? We're, we are killing like a night gaunt. Yeah. So no charge used, but we are at a six to a three. Ho oh, ho! Important that we did that. Look at me. Look at me. What am I doing here? Slow down. Slow down. I'm excited. I love this game. Okay. So we attacked once. We're attacking again. Um, we are still a six versus three. Plus one. Excellent. He is dead. Goodbye. There's no clues to be gained. So we did use two actions for that. And I'll use my last action to search for Lita. Because we can search the whole deck, right? Yeah. I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, but having Lita is not bad. Where'd she go? And then we'll shuffle our deck. Is she fast? She is not fast. <clears throat> okay. So that is our turn. There are no enemies anymore. Upkeep. Gain a resource. Draw a card. Ah, Roland's 38 special. This is way too much fight, but that's fine. <clears throat> Gain a doom. And maybe we won't get a monster. Locked door. Place at the location with the most clues. Um, well, I don't plan on going back to Rivertown. Attach the location with most clues and without a locked door attached. The attached location cannot be investigated. As an action, you can test for fight to break down the door, or for agility to pick the locks. If you succeed, discard the locked door. So that's just going to stay there, for better or for worse. I don't plan on spending actions to break that down. Okay, a little bit of a setup turn. One action to play Lita. Um... Uh, could play something worth fighting for. Uh, but she can soak up three. So I might even like to get rid of this and use her as the... Do I want to equip this just as a backup? Because if I do have to fight another Night Gaunt... Yeah, you know what? We'll equip. So that gets us four ammo. Three, four. Okay, and uh, for anyone who forgets what Roland's 38 special does, it's very nice. Okay, so that was our two actions. Third action, we're going to spend two clues. Oh, we're on turn four. Man, I'm just so, like, pumped to play. Alright, and we get to pull a cultist. So our first cultist will be Wolfman Drew, the cannibal. He is a four fight, four health, two evade. Spawns in the downtown. Forced when Wolfman Drew attacks. Heal one damage from him. Drew is a long time patient in Arkham Asylum. Rumor has it he was locked up for committing cannibalism several years ago. He is cons considered extremely dangerous. Victory one, and he deals two damage. Look at that face. So he's up there. Do we make our way over to him? Or do we kind of just... He's on our way, to be honest. 
Alright, and that was our last action. Enemy phase, he doesn't move or hunt. Or hunt is moving. Gain a resource, draw a card. Unexpected courage, that's a good one. It is turn five. Four of six doom. Hunting shadow. Spend a clue or take two damage. I have to take two damage. So I'll put one on me and one on Lita. It's not so bad. That was the Mythos. On to the investigation. Alright, so we are actually now a static five. I totally forgot about that. Which is good. Should try to get Beat Cop out, but it's not not my uh, biggest concern. Okay, so spend an action to move to St. Mary's Hospital. It is a two shard location with one clue. Heal three damage once per game. An extended stay at St. Mary's can do wonders for the body, but its effect on one's psyche is unclear. Alright, we are a three to a two. Don't feel like committing anything on this go, so we'll test. Okay, so that was a fail. How often is a fail? A little higher than the last game, actually. Um, there's another um. Try not to um. Okay. Perception? The reason I'm hesitating on perception is I know there's going to be higher shard locations, but maybe I can save Inquiring Mind for that. So let's actually use perception, putting us at a 5. Okay, so we did actually need that. So we gain the clue, and because we passed with perception, you get to draw a card. Hopefully not a weakness. Shortcut. Very good in this one. Excellent. So that is our third action. There are no enemies in play. So we go to the upkeep. Gain a resource and draw a card. Pathfinder! Oh, we gotta get you out. Cool. Mythos. New turn. We're getting there. Hopefully, I don't know if Ancient Evils, I don't think Ancient Evils is in this one. Another locked door! Um, no more arms. Locked door goes over there. That's going to be it for the locked doors. So there will be no more. So those are freebies right now. Okay. I just clicked. Oh, man. I'll get better at this, I promise. Do I just want to... I can get it out next turn. It's not a big deal. So let's spend one action to move, and we'll reveal Miskatana University. There are two clues here. Search for an action, search the top six cards of your deck for a tome or spell, and add it to your hand to shuffle your deck. The campus is quiet and lonely. Several of the buildings have been left unlocked for students and faculty working late into the night. It is a four shred location, which is tougher for us. But that's why I wanted to keep Inquiring Mind. So why don't we give an investigation a shot with Inquiring Mind? So that puts us it's six to a four. Yikes. Jeez. We were trying so hard. I could commit unexpected courage, or I could try to hope we get. I could try to hope that we get an enemy? If we get a resource, we will have enough for Pathfinder and kind of start our way towards something else. Or we could put B-Cop in. Not that we need it. But would I use Pathfinder, though? Would I start zipping around and just leave this? So I moved and I investigated. Sorry for the click. Uh, sorry for the uh. I'm so Canadian. Let's do it. Where if. No, that would only be a 5 to a 4. That is not good enough in my books. 
Should we just move again to north side? Yes, we'll move to north side. Uh, three shroud location. Spend five resources to gain two clues from the token pool group limit once per game. In north side, nothing gets people talking faster than a bit of dough. One victory point, two clues. So it's a little easier to get clues here, which is great. If we get an enemy, oh well. But there are, as we saw, there are enemies that spawn in empty locations, so we could just put them there and go kill them, get a clue. Okay. That's it. No enemies. Upkeep. Give me a resource draw card. Another steadfast. Not terrible. Mythos phase. Turn seven. Now this is going to tick over. Let's see if I can do this right. So we flip, and it's an enemy. Dun dun dun! It's the masked hunter, silently stalking. Spawn engaged with prey, and the prey is the one with the most clues, which is me. He's a hunter. The masked hunter also gets plus two health per investigator, so he's actually six health. And while you're engaged with the masked hunter, you cannot discover or spend clues. He does two damage and one horror. All right, we are pretty good to fight him. We'll probably use Roland's 38 since you get plus three to fight when there are clues on the location. <clears throat> but that's not it. There's still more. Time is running short. The minutes pass quickly as your investigation continues. So uh, another, uh, continuing on, you can resign. You don't want to risk taking too long, so you head to safety with the information you've gathered. Uh, I was hoping to get more done by now. <laughs> But, c'est la vie. Alright, let's fight this guy. Investigation phase. Good thing about this is killing him will get clue, but uh, we can't get, can't get any clues before then. So our first action will be to shoot him with Roland's 38, putting us at an 8. 8 to a 4. Cultist. Minus two and place one doom on the nearest cultist enemy. So in case that matters, drop a doom on him. He also takes two damage. We will shoot him again for a second action. Elder sign. He is now at four damage. And our last action, let's stab him with a sword take him out. But that puts us at a 7. Skull. Highest number of doom on a cultist enemy is 1. He is dead. He is our first victory point. Trigger our reaction to gain a clue. So that wasn't too bad. We got one cultist in and we got enough clues to bring out another cultist. I do not, I do hate how time is very limited in this campaign, but that's how it's supposed to be. This one's supposed to be the more difficult campaign, or uh, scenario. Grizzly Totem. That is actually pretty good, but I think Pathfinder might be good as well. But I don't need to zip, zip, zip around yet. I thought I'd be needing this hardcore, but Roland kind of just does a good job at grab the clues as he goes. Okay, so we did upkeep mythos. Turn eight. Doom. Obscuring fog. Now that is not good. So obscuring fog is a revelation. Attached to your location, limit one per location. Attached location gets plus two shroud. After the attached location is successfully investigated, discard the obscuring fog. I have an idea, so let us spend three to play the Grizzly Totem, then we'll investigate, so this location is a five, and now if we play Unexpected Courage, Grizzly Totem, 
After you commit a skill card, after you commit a card to a skill test, exhaust the totem. The card gains another instance of one of its skill icons of your choice. We should have thrown it back immediately, but how could we have known? All right. So that is that smart though. That would put us at a six to a five. I think it's worth a shot. So play the totem and investigate, right? Six to five. Yes. Booyah. And the fog was in this guard pile. And we get the victory point from north side. That was lucky. We needed that one. Alright. Where to now? We could like get ready to fight Wolfman Drew. Uh, I want to get these clues. Oh, last action will be cultist. I was trying to think of what to do with my last action. Straw cultist. We get Peter Warren, Swan at Miskatonic University. Spend two clues, parlay, add Peter Warren to the victory display. A professor of the occult has been reading strange books that relate to cannibalism. Maybe he knows of something we don't. So he only deals one damage. He's actually not too hard to kill. Stop clicking. There we go. Interesting. Now we have a reason to go back to Miskatonic. And if we actually decide to kill him, we get a clue. I'm tempted. I am definitely tempted. Okay. Enemy phase, we just have the cultists. Upkeep phase, that goes back. Gain a resource truck card. Field work. Oh, that'll be actually helpful, and I can actually play it too. So if we field work down here, we'll have a plus two. We don't even need the plus two, really. We can use a charge on the blade. But this might be helpful as well when we go fight Wolfman Drew. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. And we'll conserve clues if we kill him. Alright. Uh, that was the upkeep. Mythos. Turn 9. To Doom. Mysterious Chanting. Hex. Place two Doom on the nearest cultist enemy if there are no cultist enemies in play. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for a cultist enemy and draw it. Shuffle the encounter deck. Place two Doom. Well, good thing I was planning on killing him anyway. Now, I could choose either one, but might as well go with the plan, right? Okay. I have to attack twice to kill him next turn. Or this turn. So... There we go. So I have to... I could use Shortcut. Fast play only during your turn, and I can move down. So I could do everything. But I might want to save that shortcut. Yeah. So let's... But if I don't play fieldwork now, will I play it later? That's the, that's the real question. I wish I could get Pathfinder and fieldwork down this turn, but that's just simply not possible. Okay. Well, if I don't play this, I could shortcut here. I'd have three actions. Fight, fight, get a clue. Eh, it doesn't really work out. Might as well save shortcut. Yeah. But then what if I fail one of the attacks? He's only two fight. And we're at five base. Yeah, okay. Well, let's spend the first action to move down. 
So he engages us. All right, second action. We'll use the charge on the blade to go up to seven. Had to come at some point, right? Had to come at some point. Should have played, uh, should have played shortcut. All right, it's not the end of the world. We haven't taken any damage and he does next to nothing. So as our last action, we'll shoot him normally. Oh, there's no shooting him normally. <laughs> it normally only applies to this. So we'll just shoot him. And skull is so minus two. So he takes two damage. <clears throat> well, that was unfortunate. All right, enemy phase, we get hit for one. I'll put it on, I'll take it. I have lots of health. Right here, it just deals one damage. Yeah. Upkeep phase, gain a resource, draw a card. Oh, of course, now I get working a hunch. Turn 10, 3 doom, technically 5. False lead. If you have no clues, gain search. If you have one or more clues, test four intellect. For each point you fail by, place one of your clues on your location. Oh, that sucks. I might have to just commit this. Or... Nah, there is two clues at the location. Yeah, crap. Yeah, we'll we'll commit that. I have nothing else to commit. I don't have that icon anywhere else. So that puts us at a five to a four. No, we we'll drop our clue. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Oh well. It's too late. All right. Can't always be good luck. All right, new turn. Let us just take him out. So I'm gonna use the blade's regular fight ability, putting us at a six to a two. That's gonna kill him. And unfortunately, that grabs us just one single clue. Okay, well, now is a good time to put Pathfinder into play. So now when we move, so that's our first, that's our second action. Now when we move, if there's no enemy in there, we can move again. And I think... What to do, what to do. He takes two turns to hit. But it's gonna be three because I don't have Is he a monster? Nah, he's still a humanoid cultist. It's gonna be three, because unless I draw another weapon. Oh that's what I could do, I could draw. Okay, last action draw. If I if I get a monster I'll kill it here. Guts. Okay. Enemy phase, upkeep, gain resource, draw a card, emergency cash. Okay. I was hoping for a weapon, but all right, we're halfway to the end of this. Acolyte. Uh, not great. I think I'll put the Acolyte with Wolfman Drew. Yeah. So he gets a doom on him. We need to make our way over there. Okay. <clears throat> no more messing around. Fast play only during your turn. Choose an investigator at your location. Move that investigator to a connecting location. So we're going to play shortcut to move here, which will trigger 
Pathfinder, because there are no enemies at this location, to move over here, which will engage both of these guys, and we still have three actions. So we'll also flip downtown. There are two clues here. For an action heal, three horror. It is a four shard location, a refuge for the mind, or a prison for the soul. And this is Arkham Asylum up there. It's worth one victory point. All right, three actions. First action, should we just wail on Drew? No, I think we should kill the Acolyte, cause, just because of Doom. Because if we get like Wizard of the Order or something crazy, or another cultist. So we will just use the regular Enchanted Blade ability, putting us at a 6 to a 3. Perfect, he is dead. Oh yeah, I can just... So that was our first action. We will snag a clue with our ability. Now I believe we can only use our ability once per round. Yeah. So that's okay that we won't be killing him. We'll shoot him with our gun. Putting us at a 7 to 4. I won't buff it at all, it's fine. Okay, I got plus 1. Okay, so he's at 2. And then our third action will be to use the Enchanted Blade normally. So that is a 6 to a 4. Uh, I could commit Steadfast, but I think we're okay. And we weren't okay. Does he have Retaliate? No. Oh, I forgot he heals when he attacks. And there's a click. Oh, man. I should have Steadfasted. That's fine. You live and you learn. Oh, right. Uh, enemy phase. So, he attacks. We'll put one damage on Lita. I'll take the other. So that's two damage he deals. And when he attacks, we heal one damage from him. That's unfortunate. Because I'll have to spend all of next turn fighting him. Upkeep phase. Gain a resource. Draw a card. Magnifying glass. A little too late. We go to the Mythos. Getting up there. Let's see what we draw. False lead. Come on. If you have no clues, false lead gain search. If you have one or more clues, test four intellect for each point you fail by. Place one of your clues on the location. I'll commit the magnifying glass. And I. Oh, this is back up. But I'm going to use the Grizzly Totem to double that. So we are a 5 to a 4. Can I commit anything else? Once again, no. Hey! We keep it. Yes. Okay. We have no choice but to attack. Attack, attack, attack. And we will be at a constant 6 because we're using our blade. Yeah. Alright. Do I commit? I could commit two steadfasts here. But let's see how the first one goes. Uh, minus two. That's a hit. And then I feel better about committing steadfasts here. Commit. St oh, oh, once again, jump in the gun. So excited. Okay. So we attacked. Second attack coming in. Steadfast. Now let's do some calculations. We are 14. We've taken four. What did I say? 14, 4. So this does give us plus 3. So we are attacking at 9. Skull, we are fine. And I will use the last steadfast to ensure. Minus 3. We get him. He is. I've always thought Wolfman Drew is the most difficult one to deal with, besides the Mass Hunter. But that's just personal encounters with him. Alright, no enemies. Upkeep phase. Gain a resource. Draw a card. Pfft, too late. Need a gun. Right, 
Get a doom. We're getting there. Hunting shadow. I'll take two damage. Okay, first action. Spend clues. We'll draw a cultist. Victoria Devereaux, north side. Oh, that's to the left of us. Excellent. Oh, also, we killed Wolfman Drew. I'm going to pull that clue off. And that means we have the downtown victory point. Alright, back to Victoria. Three fight, three health, two evade. She is a humanoid cultist. Spawn at north side. Spend five resources. Uh, sorry, as an action, spend five resources. Parlay, add her to the victory display. Oliver Thomas, the propri proprietor of the curiosity shop, has informed you that a new client has taken a keen interest in a mysterious mask. She's a victory and one. She's actually the easiest one for me to get right now. That was my first turn. So second turn I could go here. Third turn. Play emergency cash. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, that's going to have to be it. And we'll have to end with just getting her. Okay, upkeep phase, gain resource, draw a card. Yeah, well. Gotta remember to hit Mythos as I go up. This is the last turn. Accolade. Now, hold on. You advance the agenda before you draw the encounter. I'm gonna put him here and go for broke. What I mean by that is I'll action one do that. Oh, is that how Pathfinder works? Oh, I should have saved an action from last turn. Okay. I'm not retroactively doing it, but what I could have done is activated Pathfinder for an extra turn to come here. And then I would have been able to get her in the victory display. Ah. That's the one thing I find a lot of people don't do in Arkham, is the retroactive moves, because you just should have taken more time, honestly. And that's my own fault. But... And I don't think it'll greatly affect the outcome. Well, we'll remember to use it this time. So, action one, we parlay. One, two, three, four, five. In you go. And then we will t activate Pathfinder, just double checking that's how it works. Yep. Down we go. Still have two actions. He's engaged with us. We will fight him or her. So we are currently a, we'd be a 6 to a 3. There's no point of keeping anything, so I'll ditch B cop, making us a 7 to a 3. So we kill you, gain a clue. Is there any possible way to actually get that? I'd have to draw a plus one, right? Oh no, I have to resign. <clears throat> Gotta remember. Because that's going to take over. Okay, so last, last turn is resign. Not bad. Not bad. We had two cultists left. I had enough clues to get the next cultist out. Now, I wonder... <clears throat> there was a few turns there. Obviously, if I had drawn the weapon, I wouldn't have had to spend so much time on Wolfman Drew. We also drew our only, our only uh, technical token, which did a... Which kind of screwed us up a little bit as well. 
we only had a few unlucky pulls. I think we did quite well. I mean, this is this is a decent victory display. Just double check. So we got the two victory point locations, and we had four cultists. That's pretty good. I think that's about that, that's about average for Roland. We could we were so close to getting one more. And just just for fun, it, if we had used if we had used Pathfinder properly in turn before, would we have gotten a plus one? No. Okay. I just had to know. All right. So let's see what happens in the story. Oh, we resigned. Sorry. T Agenda two B: The clock strikes midnight. Twelve bells ring out across the town. Wait, hold on. Did I? Yeah, you resigned on that one, right? Yes. The twelve, uh, twelve bit. <laughs> I can't read. Twelve bells ring out across the town. It is midnight. There is no time left to investigate the city. You must act based on the information you've collected from the cultists you found. R two. I've always wanted to get all six. I've never done it. So R two. Uh, if no resolution is reached, each investigator resigned or was defeated. Read resolution one. Wait, what? Oh, but it tells us. Oh, okay, I see. Just curious here. There was only. Where's agenda one? Oh, agenda one was the masked hunter. Okay. Wait, how do you get R1? Oh, right. R1 is. Yeah, okay. Resolution 2. Twelve bells ring out, signaling midnight. You're out of time. The cult's ritual will begin shortly. You've managed to obtain some useful information about the cult and its plans. You can only hope it's enough. In your campaign log, under cultists we interrogated, record the names of each unique cultist enemy in the victory display. Alright, we'll just drag this up for a second. Alrighty, cultists we interrogated. The masked hunter. Peter, is it Peter Warren? Yeah. Peter Warren. Wolfman Drew. Victoria Devereux, I believe was the other one. Dever E A U X. I'm a stickler for capitals. Usually. Okay. Taste spell, right? Yeah. So those are the six or four we got. And then I believe we also have to mark the cultist who got away. So that's Ruth Turner and Herman Collins. Cultists who got away, record the name of each each unique enemy still remaining in the cultist deck or in play. In your campaign log, record that it is past midnight. Alright. The ghoul priest is not still alive. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. Alright, next part is part three. So we gained two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So seven again, not bad. I'm kind of happy that despite a controversial choice of charisma, I had the option <laughs> all game to use it, but I never had the time slash resources to actually get it in. I was really hoping I would start the game with the the Thompson. 
and I, and I knew Ma's boarding house was one of the two options for Southside, and I was hoping I'd be able to get it in, but because we got Lita, I did save four, or trying to get four resources to get the beat cop in. So it kind of worked out. Kind of. Because Lita doesn't have any pips. And I did use the cop for better or for worse for his pip. <clears throat> so what did I think here? Pathfinder was good. I did not use it properly. Grizzly Totem came in. It did. Came, it came in clutch once. The Hallowed Mirror, I did draw it, but I was pretty fine by the end of this. Lita does soak up a lot of stuff. And I never got to properly use the bandolier, but that's that's okay. I think I've I have more experience playing as Mark Harrigan. And I used the level two bandolier to great effect. Where I'd be holding the lightning gun and some other stuff. But yeah. I think that I think this went pretty good. I've seen other games with other investigators and this is tough on true solo sometimes it really can be it just doesn't always go well we got lucky with these locked doors they never impeded us we just got a little unlucky with uh, we lost so yeah we would lost a clue on this location we would have actually been able to snag all of them if we never had to drop that clue here and I did try. I put in... Maybe I forgot to exhaust this then. You never know. There's so many things to remember all the time. Nobody's perfect. Might catch it on the rewatch. So we gained seven more experience. Forgot to fill this in last time. I, I remember. Roland. Banks. So we have a total of 14. Total. But we've already used seven. <clears throat> I'm just gonna actually, you know what? I'll put the total over here in what I actually have remaining in my slot. So over here, I'll just say total earned experience. It's not gonna matter. There's only one more scenario after this, unless we put in a side scenario. We could do that, but I don't know. We'll see. There are a lot of side missions. Like the official ones. I wonder if the official ones are at the front. Yeah, they are. So these are all the official ones right here. And these are all the uh, fan made ones. I would love to try these. I'm wondering. Should I do it now? No, I'll do it off screen. So maybe, maybe we'll do one of these on the side. Because I know, for instance, in a campaign play, if you want to play something like Curse of the Ruguru in between, you do have to spend, I think, for Curse of the Ruguru's one experience per investigator. Or each investigator has to spend one of their experience to uh, play. And I think Carnival is even more. I'm not sure about th these ones. I think this one might be two, one or two, and I don't own this one, but yeah, probably not if they're just fans, fan made, then you never know. Oh, these all look so good. Oh, I love the color out of space. Oh man, such a good story. Anyway, we will be upgrading Roland's deck. I don't know what we'll do with it. I know there's a few... Maybe we'll try to switch a few things around so that clues are slightly easier to get without having to spend so much money. Like, working a hunch is great, but I don't always have that kind of money because my deck is kind of kind of expensive. We'll see what we can do. Maybe we'll take out a few things. Like, do we really need the hallowed mirror in the next next next? Uh, because will healing be that important? Because you got to remember, unless it's fast, or unless it doesn't provoke attacks of opportunity, um, 
you like it won't matter when you're up against the big bad. So we'll make some changes. I don't I don't think the Hawkeye folding camera is gonna be any good. If you don't draw it right away, like and I don't have two of them in the deck, so the consistency is a little wonky. We'll see what we can do. Might add maybe another emergency cash since we seem to be pretty low on money all the time. There is an upgraded emergency cash where I think you can add here, let's zoom in for a sec. I don't think you can add ammo. I think you can only add supply, the, the token that says supply from one of the upgrades. I should mention that ArkhamDB.com is fantastic. So when you're on their site, here, we could probably do it in, in here, right? Hold on a sec. That's what this is for. Here, let's get rid of... Uh, I didn't want to go there. Go there. Anyway. Okay. I wonder if we can kind of... Alright. We're in the browser. Alright. So... Oh, I'm not signed in. But if I was signed in, what I could do is... I could click Upgrade. So it would have a bunch of things here. Like Edit Your Deck, blah, blah, blah. And Upgrade. And it'll ask you how many experience you earned on your last scenario. And then you input, I'd say, seven. And what it would do is on the right side here, this would be replaced with all the available cards you can t that Roland can take. So it searches the whole collection, takes only what he can take, and it divides it into very nice viewable... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like, heads-up display kind of thing. And you can select experience cards only, guardian cards only. It's really nice. And it's the best, best way, in my opinion, to, it's, it's really the only online resource that I know of that is this good. So, yeah, we'll see what we can do. There are some good neutral cards as well. Like, an oldie but a goodie. I could replace the Hawkeye folding camera with uh, a sword called the Time Worn Brand. It's really good. Actually, I could. It might. Yeah, yeah. So many things you could do. I could upgrade the forty-five automatics, but though, but they only get a plus two instead of a plus one, which is still good. Magnifying glass could be upgraded, which would kind of work well with Grizzly Totem, if it's like a last-ditch attempt, because the difference between level zero and level one is I believe it gains a fast action that brings it back to your hand, and it costs zero. So many things to ponder. I I haven't played Roland's for years, so I'm not sure. Uh, I will do my best, as I always do. If anyone has any any suggestions of things to change in the deck, please let me know. I will probably use them. <laughs> uh what I'll do is right after this, I'll, I'll I'll come up with an idea, and then I'll wait a few days, probably till Monday, Monday or Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. Uh, which from this video is what four or five days? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Anyway, I've been rambling on too long. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Once again, if I did anything wrong, please let me know. And as always. I love you. Have a good one. See ya. Bye.